so fine we understand till here now now what now what let's try to see so so let me first of all define that partial pressure so so do i erase this part fine so 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 now what we understand is that the partial pressure the partial pressure is of a gas or i'll say of a single gas is the pressure it would have exerted it would have exerted had it been had it been individually present had it been individually present in a container of volume v and temperature temperature t correct so partial pressure of a single gas is the pressure it would have exerted had it been individually present in a container of volume v and temperature t and if you are able to know that then if you sum up say say such gases then the then their total pressure that you would expect in the container of the same volume same at the same temperature will be the sum of these individual pressure understand and that is the dalton law of partial pressure so 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 dalton's law of <coughs> partial pressure partial pressure says that the total pressure exerted by a mixture of the total pressure exerted by the mixture of exerted by the mixture of non reacting gases gases equals the sum of individual partial pressures partial pressures correct so if p1 p2 p3 are the partial pressures if p1 p2 pm are the individual partial pressures the individual i should not say individual because the moment it is partial it is individual okay the partial pressures of the gases then the total pressure p is given by is given by <coughs> it is given by p is equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus pm that's what we had written here so it's not a new thing okay but just for the sake of definition i'm writing it because if you write it in a in an examination kind of scenario you should be writing this whole thing okay 
So, so it's the same thing. It's nothing different. So don't get confused. Fine. So this is what we mean. Now there is an interesting fallout of all this. Okay. We know that P1 is equal to N1 R T upon V. P2 is equal to N2 R T upon V. P3 is equal to N3 R T upon V dot 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 P M is equal to N M R T upon V. Okay. And we also know that P is equal to N1 plus N2 plus N3 Nm RT upon V. Now what happens if I divide P1 and P? So P1 upon P gives me N1 RT upon V divided by N1 plus plus N2 plus Nm it could be N3 also. So, so Nm RT upon V. Now what does that give you? It gives you that P1 upon P is equal to N1 upon N1 plus N2 plus N3 dot 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 Nm. Is it not? And what is this? This is the mole fraction. So I get that P1 upon P1 upon capital P is equal to X1. Where X1 is the mole fraction of mole fraction of gas 1. So what do we get? We get that P1 is equal to X1P. And what is P2? What should be P2? X2P. What should be P3? X3P. And what should be PM? It should be XMP. Where? Okay. Where? where x i is nothing but n i upon n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 n m is it not so the, the total number of moles of that gas divided the, the number of moles of one individual gas divided by the total number of moles that is all that is the mole fraction. Is it not? And it has all come from an equation, a very insignificant looking equation with only algebraic manipulations. You see? And the experiments somehow support it. Okay. Fine? <coughs> 